coming up on MCTV News. Around campus, there are noticeable changes ranging from new outdoor spaces to socialize and new dining options. Over the course of this past weekend, the Northeast Conference has reaffirmed their postponement of fall sports. To look further into what teaching and learning has been like during the time of the coronavirus, I sat down with the Assistant Professor of Communication and Media, Melissa Zimdars. I was lucky enough to sit down with Vice President of Student Affairs and Dean of Students, Allison Gill, for the new Unsung Warrior segment of MCTV News. MCTV News starts right now. Hello everyone and welcome back to MCTV News. I'm Nicole Fasciano and we have a lot to go over today. Ranging from coverage on what has been going on with the coronavirus on our campus to the latest and greatest with sports. Let's get right into it. To start things off, over the past eight weeks, there have been 110 COVID-19 cases connected to Merrimack. 65 were related to Monaghan, 21 other residential students, 16 off-campus slash commuter students, and seven employees and vendors. The outbreak in Monaghan was contained by the swift action of the college. This led to the quarantining of all students after five cases were spotted through surveillance testing. Many Monaghan students are returning to campus this week and in-person instruction has resumed once again. With new testing procedures and contact tracing, the Merrimack community has been able to remain on campus thus far. Around campus, there are noticeable changes ranging from new outdoor spaces to socialize and new dining options, all in accommodation for making our campus safe during the time of Corona. Merrimack's new implications are giving students, faculty, and staff the best opportunity to succeed on campus this fall. To look further into what teaching and learning has been like during the time of the coronavirus, I sat down with the Assistant Professor of Communication and Media, Melissa Zimdars. The novel coronavirus has brought about many changes to our daily lives here at Merrimack College. Ranging from new protocols with mask wearing, social distancing, and more, our classroom settings have also faced a vast amount of changes. While some students have chosen to learn fully remote this semester, others are still engaging physically in the classroom. Many professors have had to pivot their courses completely in accommodation to these students and practices. With new classroom guidelines in place, classroom occupancy has been reduced to accommodate social distancing measures. In addition, all classrooms are equipped with sanitizing stations and disinfectant wipes. Students are asked to wipe down their designated seats before and after use. While masks are always required within the classroom, professors also have the means to stand behind plastic barriers as an extra safety precaution. For many professors, this pivot to hybrid or online learning has required a lot of extra time and effort to ensure students are still receiving a strong education. Making adjustments to course syllabuses and creating engaging activities for students are only a few changes Merrimack professors have made for the success of their students this semester. I sat down with Assistant Professor of Communication and Media, Melissa Zimdars, to dive deeper into what her class preparations and accommodations looked like for this fall semester. Welcome back everyone. I'm here with Mish and currently we're going to talk about how it's been very different here at Merrimack College with professors teaching during the time of Corona. Mish, how are you doing? I'm okay. Long time no see. I know. I know. Sad. So <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's like honestly like we don't know where the time went. So kind of just tell me what has it been like planning for this semester kind of either dealing with hybrid classes, in-person classes, remote classes. What has it been like? Uh, it's been a lot. Um, normally I spend uh, my summer doing some preparation for the fall but mostly focusing on other things that a professor typically does like research with writing projects mm -hmm. and this summer it was devoted entirely to teaching and trying to figure out the best way to do a hybrid course for one of my classes which has 84 students in it Wow so yeah obviously that would be far too many uh, students <laughs> to meet together yeah no it would so, I mean, obviously your summers, like you mentioned, are mainly dedicated to research and like developing, like, you know, furthering your own learning. So how much time do you think during the summer you spent creating all these new platforms and adjusting your syllabuses and everything? 
solid two months. Yeah. Yeah. That's a like, lot. it took me, so what normally takes me, like if I'm preparing a lecture that I'm going to deliver from scratch, mm -hmm. it might take me a day or so um, to like, you know, figure out how I want to present everything. But to make them interactive um, and record audio and video bits and link to stuff to make them more mm -hmm. interesting for students taking the class remotely or asynchronously, uh, it took surprisingly a lot longer. Yeah. Um, I think most faculty will tell you uh, the amount of time it takes to prepare for in-person is usually doubled for teaching mm -hmm. um, in high flex or remote ways. Yeah, definitely. And do you think like so far your students are adapting well to this new change, like either with hybrid classes, sometimes in the classroom, sometimes not, all online? Do you think they're kind of keeping up with it or is it just not going well? Yes, yes and no. Yeah. I think some students are actually thriving more than I thought they would. Mm -hmm. Like uh, students that I've had before are participating more. I think they might feel more comfortable mm -hmm. online. Um, but I think it really depends on like the group. I'll have some Zoom meetings that are like really talkative and mm -hmm. others that are just, yeah, it's like pulling teeth. And so that's kind of like any class where it's really depends on the dynamics yeah. of who's there. That's how some of my classes have been. Like either like you have a really talkative Zoom class where you can interact well, or you're sitting there being lectured and it's painful. Yeah. So I definitely agree with that. Um, are there any other comments you kind of have to make about how like you think the school has been doing itself with like adjusting kind of protocols within the classroom itself, with cleaning desks, kind of using those plastic dividers? How do you think that's been going? I think it's been going well um, because I'm doing a mostly in-person discussion. Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not currently using the dividers mm -hmm. because I'm not speaking any more than students are in class. Mm -hmm. So we tend to sit in a circle that takes up the entire room, like basically sitting against the wall going around yeah. the circle um, or like around the perimeter. Um, but I think generally the protocols in place are good. Mm -hmm. um, I feel very thankful that I have not had a single student uh, test the mask policy. Mm -hmm. uh, even when I'm walking outside or sitting outside, everybody is wearing a mask. That makes me feel very comfortable. The really low positivity rate makes mm -hmm. me feel really comfortable. And so honestly, I was really nervous about teaching this fall, mm -hmm. like having nightmares <laughs> and nervous. Oh, no. um, and I feel a lot better um, teaching in person than I thought it was going to be. Good, I'm glad. I mean, Merrimack did everything in their power to set up mm -hmm set up Being good everywhere. protocols <laughs> for us to be here on campus. So I appreciate it. Thank you. I hope everything continues to go smoothly as well as it can. And back to you in the studio. Although teaching and learning has looked a bit different in the classroom so far, the efforts in ensuring student safety from professors, faculty, and staff have truly shown. It was a great experience to explore the changing nature of our classroom settings and what professors have done to prepare for this academic year. Now, let's take a look at what updates MCTV Sports have for us. Sean? Thanks for the introduction, Nicole. I'm Sean McAvoy. Due to the impact that COVID-19 has had on college athletics across the country, there have been many sports updates on campus. One of the most important ones, which has only happened this past weekend, is the reaffirmment of the postponement of fall sports in the Northeast Conference. The Northeast Conference originally postponed fall sports in the end of July until October 1st, but had to further postpone it until November 25th due to safety concerns regarding COVID-19. The NCAA has also pushed fall sports championships to the spring semester. After talking to the head coach of the football team, Coach Curran, there is a chance that fall sports will be playing a shortened season in the spring. There is, however, one sport on campus that will be competing as usual. The hockey teams will be able to participate in competitive play due to the fact that they're currently in the Hockey East Conference instead of the Northeast Conference. There have also been differences and updates to how intramural sports have been happening on campus. Now we'll kick it over to our intramural sports package with Sean. Like many other things in Merrimack College this year, the way that intramural sports are run this year is going to be different than in years past. Due to COVID, 
We're not able to have traditional leagues like basketball, floor hockey, flag football, or anything like that. Instead, the way the intramurals will be run this year is every Tuesday and Thursday, there will be outdoor intramural activities. These range from different things like cornhole, can jam, and even the most recent of which, ski ball. These are different activities that give students a chance to still compete in intramurals against each other. The way that they're scored this year is that whichever dorm you're living in, when you win a game, you earn points for your dorm. At the end of the semester, the dorm that has the most points will win a prize. During intramurals, they're also making sure to follow all COVID regulations and COVID restrictions and to clean all equipment throughout the intramural sports. Wow, it's crazy to see that new look of intramural sports on campus and how it's so much different due to COVID. There have also been a lot of updates in sports off campus and in the national news. Only in the past few weeks, we've seen with the Stanley Cup, the Tampa Bay Lightning defeating the Dallas Stars. In the NBA, we currently have the LA Lakers playing against the Miami Heat, who are currently down in the series two to one. The Miami Heat stole game three due to a 40 point triple bubble by Jimmy Buckets, even with the key injuries to Goran Dragic and Bam Adebayo. In the MLB, the playoffs have just only started currently with the New York Yankees playing the Tampa Bay Rays. The Oakland Athletics are currently going against the Houston Astros. The San Diego Padres are playing against the Los Angeles Dodgers. And finally, we have the Atlanta Braves going against the Miami Marlins, who are definitely the most surprising team to have made it this far into the playoffs. It's great to see that the MLB, although their initial struggles at the beginning of the season, were able to pull their stuff together and make it to the playoff stage that they are at now. The NFL has only just recently kicked off their season. Now let's kick it over to Fantasy Factor, MCTV's newest weekly segment with Michael Gage and Matt Gagnon. So now we'd like to welcome the quarterback of our very own Merrimack College football team, Drew Bay. Thank you, thank you. So thank you so much for joining us today. So how about we talk some college football? Yeah, um, let me start off by saying, uh, obviously, it's a, it's a very um, rough time with coronavirus and stuff like that. And since we aren't out there on the field every Saturday, some of my favorite teams to, to watch have been Oregon, Stanford, um, LSU, Penn State, we are. Um, all are great teams. Obviously, I couldn't agree more with Oregon, right. but I'm a Notre Dame Clemson fan, so Stanford, LSU might right. kind of be questionable for me. You really had to throw in that we are in there? <laughs> yeah, we I are. I, I can't really get behind Penn State, but those other teams you mentioned, obviously great programs and right. love watching them. So. Right. Um, obviously, it's been a great year to have college football back for some. So this week, the top three uh, games, well, we'll start with one, Alabama or Ole Miss. I think this is going to be a, a, a very good offensive game, but I got Alabama coming out with the win. Um, secondly, we have Oklahoma and Texas. Um, Texas lost to TCU last week, but Oklahoma's defense is very rough right now and very shaky. So I got Texas winning that. Um, and the last game was, will be my top game is Miami and Clemson. Um, Derek King has been great this year, but I think Clemson is going to come out with the win. All right. All right, man. Well, I really appreciate you being with us thank today. You, thank you. Had a lot of fun. Um, thank you. I look forward to seeing you in the spring. Hopefully, right. kind of stinks that we can't see you in the fall, but yeah. thanks anytime, for joining us. Yeah, anytime you, you guys can have me, I'll be here. Right. Thank you. And then so, well, thank you guys for tuning in for this week's special edition of Fantasy Factor. I'm Mike, he's Matt, this is Drew Bay, and we'll see you next week on MCTV Sports. <laughs> wow, what a great segment. If you haven't been able to see the first few segments of Fantasy Factor, check out MCTV's YouTube page to view them. It is crazy to see how the NFL has done so well comparatively with COVID, even though they have not been able to do a bubble like the NBA or NHL did. That's about all we have now for sports, so let's hand the mic back to Nicole. Since sports have been back, it has been great to dive into not only what is going on at the national level, but also here at Merrimack. Now, let's take a look at one of our newest segments here on MCTV, The Unsung Warrior. This segment acknowledges those who have gone above and beyond for the Merrimack College community and have made a positive impact. Our first unsung warrior is Allison Gill. 
She has worked hard to create a safe environment for students, faculty, and staff this fall. Our very own Colleen Miron had the chance to sit down with her to get more insight as to what she has done for the Merrimack College community. Thank you, Nicole, and thank you everyone for tuning in to MCTV News today for our first ever segment of The Unsung Warrior. I'm lucky enough to be sitting down with Dean of Students and Vice President of Student Affairs, Allison Gill. Allison, thank you so much for being here with us thank today. Thank you for having me. Um, so th we appreciate all that you've done to allow us back on campus this year. So what was the preparation like over the summer for that and how did that become a possibility for us this year? Yeah, so, so actually preparation for you all coming back actually started last spring <laughs> while we were still <laughs> in session, believe it or not. So once we were up and running with remote learning and um, clubs and organizations were meeting and we were able to kind of master the Zoom world, we immediately switched to what we were gonna do to open the campus. And so it was a Herculean effort. There were so many people that were involved from the administration to the residence life staff on the ground to orientation to, there was just so many people involved in making sure that everything went seamlessly well. And so we, we honestly, we thought uh, about this from every single angle, from every detail. We, we pretended we were parents and took it from the parent lens. We looked at it from the student lens. We looked at it from as a faculty member, as a staff member, really trying to make sure that we were as transparent as possible with what the plans were going to be to reopen. And so it was definitely, COVID-19 was not predictable and very challenging at times. And so there were plans that were made and then plans that had to change very quickly and so we just kind of learned to be flexible. Mm -hmm. We learned that um, you know, we needed to make sure that we had everything as organized as possible. And then we learned to kind of adapt if we needed to in, in that moment in time. But our most important thing was always to be back on campus, to be here in person. You know, we are, Merrimack is just, it's such a, an institution that is really, it's about relationship building. It's about the community, it's about the people. And so, we always just kept our eye on that goal that we really wanted to bring this community back to this campus. So every time that those, those plans were, were washed away and rebuilt again, we just kept that, kept going with that as our motivation that we really wanted to be back here and on site at Merrimack. I'm so thankful that you guys worked so hard to make that happen because being a senior, I'm yeah. so happy just to be back on this campus. and. Spending all of that time in quarantine with my family was very hard. So I'm very happy to be back and we, with my friends. You are not alone. We heard that <laughs> from a few different people. So yeah, I don't, we understand. I'm sure. Um, but I know that you, there are many challenges that you faced. But what are some of the specific challenges that you had struggled with in engaging students due to, like, with this structure of social distancing and remote learning and keeping that community engaged. Yeah, so we, we really quickly pivoted and, and learned Zoom very quickly. And then um, we started this brand new communication was called This Week at Merrimack, right? And so what we did is we tried a whole bunch of different engagement opportunities for students, whether it be a Spotify playlist to virtual bingo to just kind of, I was still having dishes with the Dean on Fridays I would literally just sit with a group of students for an hour and they would just talk. They would talk about their home experience. They would talk about what was going on in their classes. They would you know, really kind of provide us with some, some, some intelligence on what was working and what wasn't working and then we quickly would amend. And we would continue to offer those programs for them so that they could um, really just relate to each other. Club and organization meetings were huge, something that I think that was kind of the, the, the groups that students were missing. They were missing those people that have like interests and their friends. And so we really just tried to provide as many opportunities as we could to engage people virtually and online. And then as Massachusetts started to open back up a little bit, it actually allowed us to open the campus back up a little bit. So we opened the campus in phases and we did so in a way that we were able to bring small groups of students back back to live on campus. We were able to provide some orientation opportunities. So for us, it was all about trying to see what we could do um, you know, to, to keep people involved. And so, um, and we continued that. Actually, mm -hmm. once school ended, it actually didn't end. Those club and org meetings still went on, which was great. We still provided some programming programs over the course of the summer. So we tried to, to do what we can. And I think Merrimack, again, is such a small, a, a strong community that at times it was, it was just easy to pull people together because they just wanted to see each other's faces. They just wanted to interact. And so um, it, was, it, was, it was challenging in a way that I think, you know, people were, were Zooming from home, from their bedrooms, from, 
you know, you know, with brothers and sisters and other family members that were around them. So sometimes that was really challenging for them. And so we just made sure that we provided mental health resources, wellness coaches, you know, and just kind of our, the, the student affairs staff to be there to just be on the other side of that Zoom just to talk students through when, when something was going, was, was going awry for them. And I think this, you know, COVID-19 has been really hard on everybody. And so I think just really trying to acknowledge that and, and really validate that in our students was important. And so, um, you know, it, it was definitely something that um, it took everybody by surprise and it happened really quickly and it took people time to process that. And we just tried to meet everybody where they were at in their process. And, you know, it, and it, I, think it, I think it worked, you know. Um, I think people were definitely prefer, prefer to be in person for the most part, but um, you know, the remote, we've actually become pretty proficient at it. And so really just um, excited that it worked out. Yeah, for sure. And I am so thankful for all of the virtual opportunities that we've had. Um, but speaking kind of to that, what virtual events or even in-person events that you guys were able to hold this semester, like what has been really successful? So um, a lot of our playlists have gone really well. Students have participated. Um, something new that we started, we started um, a cooking kind of segment on Sundays, and that's gone really well. Bingo. Bingo is, is huge. Oh, oh my bingo. gosh. Bingo is huge. <laughs> so we are now, um, when we have it in person in the tents, it's in three different tents, then it's virtual. So, um, so we've tried to do more of the bingo trivia has also been something that's good. We've been really excited. We got to open Augie's. So Augie's has been open for the past, um, this will be its third week. And so I think seniors and, and students that are of age are really excited about that. It's kind of more of a dinner sit down opportunity, but it's been really, it's been awesome. And I think it's, it's, it's bringing back a little bit of that normalcy that, that everybody knows. Yeah, for sure. And I'm definitely happy to have Augie's opening back up, especially with the winter weather coming in. I know. So what other events or activities will be options for students on campus mm -hmm. as it does get colder? And what do you encourage us to do? Yeah, so I think what we're gonna what we're gonna we're gonna start to pivot into indoor activities, and so there are some ve venues that actually are a little bit larger, like the Rogers Center, like Casha. There's some other um, places that we can have up to 25 people, and so that's our goal: is we're gonna try to start to shift to that indoor programming. We are going to try to use the tents as long as we possibly can. They're open, they're airy. I think the students feel safe out there. Uh, we're gonna bring in some heaters there too, so I think it will help it last a little bit longer. Um, but yes, we're going to start to transition inside, doing so by following all of the guidelines and whatnot, um, but really trying to, to keep that Merrimack spirit, keep those programs that everybody loves, and um, you know, just continue to offer in different locations. So maybe it's the same program, but a few different locations for that program. So, um, so that's kind of how we're looking at, at pivoting for the colder weather. That sounds great. Thank you so much again for being here with us today and thank you for all that you've done as well as the task force and all the other people that you've mentioned that have made such an amazing difference and got us back onto campus. I'm personally so thankful and I'm happy to have you here today and have been given this chance to sit down and talk with you. Oh, thank you very much. I'm so happy to be here too and I'm happy you're here. <laughs> thank you everyone for tuning in and we will see you next time for the next Unsung Warrior segment. To wrap things up, we're going to send it over to Alex, who is going to go over the September police log. Alex? Hi, I'm Alex Conti, and let's get right into the September police log. On September 1st, an officer addressed several students on the basketball court not wearing masks. All students were compliant and put on their masks, and they were clear without issues. Talk about a foul. On September 2nd, a call reported that there is a lot of broken glass around a building at Royal Crest that they believe was from Merrimack students throwing a glass off of a balcony. NAPD was notified, and they met MCPD over there. All students were documented, and residence life was advised. Not good. On September 3rd, a neighbor called in a complaint that the past two nights, DoorDash had entered her driveway late at night attempting to deliver food to students. They rang her doorbell and she is extremely frustrated. On September 4th, a student called reporting a suspicious odor in the residential area. MCPD responded and call unfound. I mean, I wonder what that could have been. As Stephen Nail would say, stay off the illegal substances. 
On September 5th, MCPD received a call that the father of a residential student who reported his daughter hit her head in the room last night and is now not feeling well. He will be coming to campus to take her to a walk-in, but he was an hour away and would like someone to check on her. Officer made contact, the student was fine, and will be calling her dad. On September 11th, an Ash RA requested to speak with an officer about an angry student. On September 12th, a student advised of someone playing the trumpet in the freshman quad at 2 a.m. Who the heck plays their trumpet outside at 2 a.m.? I mean, the Merrimack Band is looking for new musicians, after all. On September 14th, MCPD responded with NAFD for a fire alarm. Fire alarm was caused by a hair straightener. I mean, imagine what one of the, the weirdest calls the fire department has ever responded to. On September 15th, MCPD got a report of an individual running while punching the air. An officer checked in the area and found that party was gone on arrival. Now we know how his fantasy football team did this week. On September 17th, a female commuter student was arrested on warrant and transported to Andover PD. Hope they liked the quick trip. On September 18th, suspect arrived students that they were running through the sack, knocking over items. This isn't football practice. Duane Stadium is only a few minutes away. On September 18th, an officer out with two males in their underwear on Walsh Way. Put on some clothes. On September 18th, a suspect called to advise a hockey player took a fall on the ice and could not get up. On September 23rd, a resident of South Residential Village called MCPD to report a student who moved into quarantine had left quarantine and went to go play basketball. The AC was contacted, and we get it, ball is life, but the title for best flu game goes to Michael Jordan. On September 27th, a resident of Fox Hill Road called to report security vehicles' orange lights are becoming a nuisance. Officers were advised to have the student turn them off. On September 29th, an officer assisted with a complaint that too many students were going into dumps without proper PPE. Good things come to those that wait. And that's it for the September police log. Now we kick it back to Nicole. Thanks, Alex. Well, that's all we have for you today. Thank you for tuning in and be sure to look out for more MCTV editions to come. I'm Nicole Fasciano and stay safe, warriors.